It's not time for us to get into issues making headlines in the news affairs on News Review. And before we get to know our panelists for this morning, let's look at the issues that are making headlines. And we'll start with the daily graphic for this morning that says vegetables to rake in $1 billion in seven years. President Akufado projects at Greenhouse Village inauguration. And deadlock, EC parties fail to agree on new register. Also on the front page, four siblings bent to death near Kintampo and students loan trust to disperse loans soon. You know there's been uh, an issue with the loans. But uh, the back page says boreholes in Dodoa polluted, that's according to a study. And GPHA, Ministry of Health, sensitized Tebaport operatives uh, on coronavirus. Now, the Ghanaian Times for this morning says, IPAC meeting on new register, no major breakthrough. EC poised to compile new register. And three grab for illegal mining, and the NCA 4 million financial loss case accused says approval for purchases is unlimited. And Tema General Hospital stimulates handling of coronavirus case. The back page says um, contractor hands over renovated water systems to three communities in Shai Osudoku and Tema General Hospital. Okay, so they uh, simulate handling of corona uh, case. Then we get to the Business and Financial Times and it says city fiscal risk may push BOG to hold policy rates, that's data bank research, and fuel prices to come down, IES uh, says, and uh, that's because of stable city and external factors to influence lower rates. And still on the front page, government targets $1 billion from vegetable exports. The finder says, over five hour IPAC meeting inconclusive, all eyes on EC's committee as stakeholders await communique. And poor human development threatens Africa's growth. That's according to Senor Hossi, and that's the CEO of the Bok uh, Distribution Companies. And over 400 children diagnosed with cardiovascular diseases unable to afford treatment. And finally, coronavirus declared global health emergency by the World Health Organization. Final newspaper for today and is the Daily Guide that says support year of roads agenda. That's according to Dr. Bamia. And uh, this is how the Daily Guide captures the story on the Electoral Commission and the parties. Parties say yes to new register. And Codvet Outdoors Skills Gap Report, Otunfo Lots Nana for Obwasi Mine Reborn. And finally, uh, at the back page, a lot of sports stories. Akono lays down selection criteria and Boatin slaps teammates. So that's uh, Jerome Boatin, where I told her he slapped uh, Goretzka. And Ronaldo sets Instagram record, becomes the first man to have 200 million followers and then coronavirus delays china league start all right so uh, we'll get into the details shortly but let me introduce uh, our panelists for this morning and we've been joined by george ac who is communications director of the national disaster management organization and also a member of the npp's communications team uh, good morning george yeah good morning uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, we're still expecting representative from the ndc so uh, once the ndc's representative joins us uh, he would also join the team and we have a discussion on it so uh, let's start off with the electoral commission and its uh, eminent advisory committee and they are meeting with political parties and civil society organizations. The press have covered it in different forms. Yeah. Uh, while the finder says all eyes on EC's committee, the uh, Ghanaian Times talks about IPAC meeting on new register. No major breakthrough. EC points to compile new register. The Daily Guide says parties say yes uh, to new voters register. But um, I'm sure you've been monitoring, you've been yeah. following yeah. the discussions. Yesterday, the meeting ended inconclusively. And sure the, about yes, that? the committee says it is going to engage further. Isn't it? I mean, we've read the yes. report of the committee, and the yes. committee says they will engage further. For the technical details. Base. Yes, they would get the yeah. political parties and their IT teams Good. Uh, you know, Good. to meet, and then they would advise the Electoral Commission. So no, okay. it is not no. as if we're okay. done with the consultation, yeah. and a decision has been taken as a judge. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let me say good morning to you, your production crew, and our viewers. Uh, to be honest with you, Winston, I thought this has been long overdue. Huh. This should have preceded the announcements that the Electoral Commission uh, made as far as the compilation of a new register is concerned. Uh, I'd had the uh, opportunity to have said that uh, I thought the Electoral Commission should have been more engaging at the IPAC level. And then giving all the consultants and experts advice 
on the need for a new register to the political parties. Okay, they are major stakeholder in this whole affair. I've sat here and said if the NDC doesn't want to participate, uh, they can as well boycott it. But but you know that is but, not going to happen. <laughs> yes, but but I again said that. Uh, to be fair to them, uh, I thought the engagement should have been very proper. So in effect, what they were so, doing. So in effect, you are you're, you're not happy with how the Electoral Commission handled this The initial process. stages, yes. The, okay. uh, the IPAC wasn't fully used and properly engaged. And so when the eminent advisory committee waded in, I said, thank God. Because, look, like them or not, those who were on the streets, they, something was happening that they were not happy with. Okay, and once we want a unified nation, we are building a nation and building our democracy, we need to include the views of the minority, no matter how insignificant they are, as far as the electoral processes were concerned or are concerned. And so when they waded in, uh, Justice Emil Short and his team, I doffed my hat for them. I said, thank God for, for, for the eminent advisory committee. And they asked the EC, you know, after engaging the EC, they saw the need to have an IPAC meeting. And I was happy the international community's presence in that meeting yesterday. Okay, mm -hmm. UNDP, British High Commission, and other. Why were you happy about their presence in that meeting? You know, you know, I mean, what, they're, what, they're what, role, what role do they play in yes, the No, you know, that, that, that when the country is united and there's no trouble and problem, they are at peace. When we have problems, they are, you know, compelled to come in and support. And again, they are major stakeholders in our electoral processes because they give us a lot of grants when it comes to the conducting of elections in Ghana. But this time, mm -hmm. government is funding the conduct of the elections. Of course, it? of course. Government funds it all the time. But in, I mean, in, in, in previous elections, we've gotten yes, some yes, uh, funding from yes, these institutions. Yes, that yes. is not the case, in fact. <laughs> uh, John Dramani no, Mahama has had cause to even say, why don't you uh, take advantage of some of these uh, funds that are available rather yeah. than using uh, government of Ghana funds, which uh, could have been used for other projects to fund elections. Oh, but you know, the, the international community sometimes also gets not only funding the, the technical training and other aspects of the political parties and the electoral commission aspects and co. They do that. And so they are partners in development as far as uh, elections are concerned. So that's why I said I was uh, happy. But ultimately, I was happy that all the parties were, you know, present there or with their representatives. And I was happy at Winston when the Electoral Commission decided to allow the independent candidate to also make a presentation. Okay? Not, you know, I've heard some people say, why should the independent, come on. And why should if the CSOs be giving a chance to make a presentation? If, yeah. an, indep if an independent candidate makes a presentation. Yeah. The independent candidate is a direct participant in the whole scheme. The civil society okay. organizations yes. Yes. represent the interest of the general populace. Yes. They've always played a role in our elections. Yes, they've always. Why shouldn't they be given It a would have been proper respect? if they had been given the chance. But I don't see the damage caused if they were not given. Because we have over 100 CSOs in this country. Over 100. But if you... If, and so but, if but, you but, say but, 18 but, but of them were, are saying... But if they were invited... And taking yes, a, yes, but George. Yes. If they were invited... The, yes. You are invited to, t to participate in a meeting. Some are to be observers. Why shouldn't they be giving no, a no, chance? No, no, some to are to be you particularly, are invited to be Particularly when the independent presidential candidate yes. is a known supporter of the compilation of a new register. Possibly. He is. Yes. He is. He and then the, the 18 CSOs, not even uh, a quarter of the number of CSOs we have in the country. Okay, but I thought if they are in a group, their lead, one of them could have been, you know, made their leader to make a presentation on behalf of the CSOs. That would have been excellent, to be honest with you. But to say no to all of them wasn't too good. You can be honest with you. Because once you've invited, but you can be invited uh, on a, in an observer status. That is also there. But ultimately, I thought the EC did well by making the presentation. And after the presentation, giving the opportunity to all the political parties uh, to make their state their position, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that was good. That was good. Then it, you know, makes the eminent advisors committee to understand the thinking of all the parties and the doubts and the challenges and difficulties they are having. And then the alternate suggestions that they are putting on the table. Okay. Uh, it's an excellent uh, 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 meeting. And you see, after the meeting, uh, some 
calm seemed to have come on the nation. That maybe I'm the one. Are you sure? That. Because yeah. after the meeting, we've had the general secretary of the NDC, we've had the uh, national the chairman, chairman of, the, of NDC. the NDC, we've even had the uh, chairman of the People's National Convention, Bernard Mona. Yeah. Bernard Mona says, "Well, it was inconclusive, and so they are continuing." I, I, I heard something. Correct me if I'm wrong. I heard that in the presentation, it's like about nine or so <laughs> parties who are in favor of a new register as against three uh, who have reserved reservation. We are in a democracy. Well, the, the, we are in a democracy. The, the statement from the uh, committee <laughs> says, majority of the parties majority. support a new register. I have, also, I, have also read, a I have also read a statement <laughs> by uh, some of the CSOs, uh, yes. you know, led by Manson Thompson, who, who argues that um, you know, those who are invited, uh, many of the parties are parties which do not take part in elections. And you would agree that uh, the EC itself would tell you that there are a lot of parties. What's, hold on. What's the register? There, there are a lot of parties on uh, the register of the Comatose. electoral commission. Comatose. Yes, yes, right. Yes, yes, I mean, yes. They're on terminal leave. They're dead. Until and unless the EC decides to do the need that I, they've set a certain criteria. You remember, mm -hmm. Madame Charlotte Ose had, you know, uh, insist after she went around for certain inspections and said you need to have offices in a certain percentage or number of constituencies. Two-thirds of districts. Yes, you get it. And so if that is not met, you must take the decision to say going forward, if you don't meet the criteria, you're not going to function or exist as a political party. Okay? We're not certain parties that I tell you, you can count more than 12 members of the party. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't, sure? I don't want to name names. I don't want to name names. You can count 12 members <laughs> More of, of a certain party. Yes, yes, they are registered. registered. They must have founding members. And the founding <laughs> members must be in all districts. We have 260 districts <laughs> in this country. So you can certainly not say that. <laughs> you know, these, these political parties don't have They exist. And you cannot count more than 12. Okay, you, let me change the, the phrase. Known members of mm. the party. You get it. And yet, it is a functioning political party and is engaged in all the stakeholders' uh, engagement mm. all the time. So, you so, get it. George. And yeah. they, they pan that mm. to, you know, certain. Mm. They have some leanings, okay. and, and as and when they are needed, they are kicked, you know, to in to are you, are make you contributions saying, Are you saying that call. these small political parties are leaned to the two major political parties? Most of them, most of them, you get it, most of them are leaned. Some are like PPP, they are independent, CPP, uh, uh, PNC. But you know, of late, we have uh, PNC, MPP, PNC, uh, NDC. Oh, really? We have CPP, you know, MPP, you know, you know the NDC, CPP, uh, 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 the, the PNC, uh, the PNC. <laughs> <laughs> NPP for a fact. You know that one for a fact. You know the PNC NPP for a fact. Why not the other one? Oh, but you're, you're an NPP man, so I'm asking from where you are coming from. You know the PNC NPP. Uh, you see, the, NPP their conducts fact. and then pronouncements and co then begins to give them away. You get it. That is uh, why we've tagged some of them, you know, that way. So it's, 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 um, uh, but it's, I think that as a political party, the primary objective of any political party, is to win political power and then implement their programs to transform the nation and its people. Okay, that's the primary objective. Some will say, yes, there are other parties who are not necessarily there to win political part, uh, power. Okay, then what is there? They want to be power brokers. We are not having the prime ministerial system uh, uh, in our this the way you can say the Greens, you know, sometimes you need the Greens to be able to get the majority to move in, right? Sure. This is an executive presidency kind of. Okay, so as a party, you must be there to win power. Okay. That should be the primary. So let's look at if one other not, issue. Um, fine. Uh, let's look at this issue. So we are, tomorrow is February. It means we're yeah. in the second month. And yeah. then we'd have uh, about uh, 10 months to election 2020. Yeah. Yeah. The Electoral Commission is still engaged, uh, you know, with stakeholders on the way forward. Shouldn't this tell us that maybe just maybe the electoral commission should be thinking of shelving these plans and as others have suggested come back to compile it after the 2020 elections where it is not close to an election and everybody can actually say well it is not because of any attempts at voter suppression no i don't think so the, because the, the, because the electoral commission has been accused that uh, you know inter-party resistance uh, group uh, particularly the ndc has accused government and the electoral commission of doing this just to suppress voters in their strongholds. Why will they do that? But that that looking, argument but, but, but sounds looking at the time, Yes, but people. looking at the time, yeah. shouldn't the Electoral Commission? No. Ten months to the elections. No. no. When are you going to come That's precedence. Yes. That's precedence. 2012, you know the time? 
Now you see the and liberation the was taking in 2011. Uh, yes. And procurements had started. Uh, but this one, procurements have started. Pro procurements are It's not going. I mean, Concurrently. But these ones, the engagement? But you procurements see, are that's why ongoing. I said engagement. Procurements are ongoing in 2020. Yeah. While in the previous situation, all parties agreed. And by 2020, uh, 2012, it had been rolled out. But this one still is, is the non concurrently going on alongside this. I don't see the problem with it. Once they've stated the middle of April, specifically 18th to 30th of May, uh, it's all the same as happened in 2012. And it's all by using the concept of the v BVMS, Biometric Verification Management System, and then the compilation of the new register. And a good thing, this one will even be the more uh, easier because a lot of the bio data is already, a lot of people is already in the system, okay? Right. And so the time they are going to use to interrogate you, your date of birth and all that, it's already there. So that pops up and then two key things, official recognition process and then the uh, fingerprints. Okay, these are the things that are mostly needed. Only a few people, new voters, uh, will go through the thorough process of taking bio data and these other uh, important uh, 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 details, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think, yes, they should expedite. Uh, I had something, I, I don't know how true it is. I think it came from the NDC quarters that uh, the EC is saying everything will be done and dusted by November. If, if I, I had, had that if, too. Yes, if, if, if I had that right, then the EC should be prepared to give us all the roadmap, the details of what would actually be done and dusted by uh, November. And we'll be having about uh, a month to the election. Okay, the, I had 8th November, which means that's a month to the next election. And I had Isn't that problematic? Because no, it's not uh, problematic. You're, you're, it's, you're, they, you're they going to be ending exhibition and everything by November 8th. That's the, like a month to the elections. Yeah. You're supposed to, uh, the political parties are supposed to have, yes. uh, I mean, the they register uh, before. Yes. I mean, and, and I had the General Secretary of the uh, NDC, yeah, General, uh, General uh, Asir yeah. Dunketia, make yeah. the point that yeah. uh, they need to have the register, yes, even before course. they file for the presidency. <laughs> and uh, you, you, you're, we're, saying, we're in this country, you're saying by November, by the time so, so in, in we're that filing case, the last proper. time, no register was ready. I'm not saying we should keep doing that, okay? But that's why the eminent advisory committee is saying the engagement is going to go on. So the EC will be able to assure the political parties, take their advice or their suggestions to see how they can beat that up. I would rather we get about three months, you know, the registrar should be ready three months to the election. That would have been the most convenient way, and I'll be very satisfied with that. And again, the minorities, uh, particularly the NDCs, fear that people want to do new biometric register or registration because we want to suppress uh, the, the, the number of people that will register in their strongholds is not founded. It doesn't have any basis, right? Because, look, <laughs> I have been a polling agent many times. When we are doing registration, I've been there. Mm -hmm. We've been officers there for the political our party and cool. And so the process is so open. The NDC person is there. We just laugh, you know, where we disagree. We, we see we, we, the EC people will come, hey, two of you come and see what is happening. This is this, why we are doing this. If we are satisfied, okay, go on. If we are not satisfied, hold on. The other person will call a superior officer, <laughs> you get it, to come and then see before they continue. It's been an open engagement processes in the registration. So what are we talking about? You're saying K2 South, we are not going to allow people. Yes, we will not allow people to come from Togo to come and vote, register. We will not allow that, okay? We are going to do everything we can to stop those people from coming to vote. If you are not a Ghanaian citizen, if you are in Togo and you are a Ghanaian citizen, that one but is, is but okay. But, but, but okay, if you are in Cote d'Ivoire, yeah, but, but our laws citizen, allow for dual fine. citizenship, doesn't it? Yes, of course. So, so you so, need, so, you so need if you, proof if you, of that. If you, you possess, if you possess that. dual yes. citizenship. Yeah. That Let's one. Say you are Togolese yeah. from Ghanaian. If like it's no big deal about it. Yeah, you can. No big deal. Yeah. Once you know. People. But doesn't that create the fear? I mean, so the point you've just made. <laughs> yes. That you're not going to allow these people yes. to come and register. If they are not Ghanaians. How, how do you. We know that. We live how with them. How do you independently, <laughs> as a polling agent them. of yeah. a ruling party, yes. determine who's Ghanaian and not? 
Oh, come on. We know them. Okay. No, but if you come, the citizenship identification process, if you're able to meet that, no big deal. It says you must have two people giving uh, uh, surety for you, right? To say Winston is a citizen and co. Once you have those two people, if I have my doubts, you know, and sometimes we get information, intel. Okay, at the place. Before the, some people will get there, we'll get people will run and come to us. Ah, look, these people coming. They, are, they live in our hood. They are Togolese or they are Ivorians, you know, part of the refugees. They are not Ghanaians. So when they come, don't let them register. Then we say, what basis? So then we say, oh, we'll, give, we'll tell you the details. So when they come and they are challenged, they, they say, okay, we are coming. They go and they never return. You get it. So people, they live with people in communities and people know them. But if there's an issue, a thorough act basis, the person says, no, this is, then you get, you know, the justification. You see people then, they register them tentatively. They, they ask you to challenge them. You get it. They will be registered. But you have the opportunity to challenge them. And you'll be called to a committee meeting to then adduce your evidence or the basis upon which you think X is not a citizen. Okay. That opportunity is there. Okay, and we've done that. Some, we got some people, they were registered as citizens. And others, they were, you know, said they were told, no, you are not a citizen. So after the uh, arbitration, they were not registered. That is a fair, open process available to everybody. Okay, and the NDC is not a small party. We are not underrating them at all. Okay, we respect them as the alternative. We know that. Okay, but then I know they are also not going to sleep to say uh, we should bulldoze our way and do whatever. And wouldn't we want. that be no. a recipe for chaos? Why? Because they are not going to sleep. You are not going to sleep. Yes. You are prepared to challenge certain people because even before election 2016, you said, uh, you know, the register, <laughs> uh, a, a Ghanaian register, if you look at yeah. uh, that of the Volta region, you yeah. saw people yeah. who used your facial recognition technology <laughs> and said you saw people who were Togolese. They had. Uh, you know, uh, their names were in the Togolese register. You could see their face uh, in the Togolese register and also Evidence see their based. face in uh, the Ghanaian <laughs> register. Yeah. Now, wouldn't that in itself, because from all that you've said, there's a likelihood that you would want to prevent some of these people from <laughs> registering. Yeah, and there will also be the defense from the other end. Yeah. Wouldn't this create chaos? No, it will not. You know, you know why one of our ministers, the energy minister, is one of the powerful people in our government? You know why? Why? He was chairman in the military. You know that's not our stronghold. Mm -hmm. he, but he did a human's job there. Okay? He did. Look, there are certain things we don't we will not talk about on air. But not illegitimate. Very legitimate. Processes but to ensure that. Scared people from coming to vote. <laughs> Is that what you're talking no, about? But you're not Ghanaian. What are you coming to do here? Oh, so you agree that he, <laughs> he put fear in people not to come out? Oh, no. He used the due process to tell people if you're not part, don't be part. Okay, really? you, call, you, call what, you, call, you call what that happened due process? Oh, ah, what's the thing? Institute of Engineers are having their meeting. You are not an engineer. What are you going to do there if you were not invited to come there? Hmm. Allow the engineers to have their meeting, okay? That's and the, so, in some instances, you can fly drones and say we are, you are being watched. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, Once well, it's not damaging anybody. When, 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 the, when, the but, you know, when the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority at the time had only two drones registered <laughs> in the country, that was certainly not one of them. <laughs> uh, oh, ahead, it ahead. wasn't a uh, mistake. So I, I, I think uh, we need to engage them. You see, we know ourselves. Though. We are friends. Though. Huh? We are we friends. Myself and the, especially those of us who are players on the field, as far as the political field, we engage a lot. And so I think the NDC shouldn't have any fears. They are a strong party. Uh, they are determined to win. We are more than determined to win. And we'll play the ball fairly. Finally, That's um, what we finally and do. let me just say that we're still waiting for a representative from the NDC. Um, uh, that representative has still not shown up. Once the representative shows up, uh, he, also, he or she would also be able to have his views on this particular issue. And so I still have George uh, AC here with me, who is representing the NPP. Now, one other thing, you know, you've talked about the fact that uh, you know yourselves. Yeah. Your former national chairman, Peter McMain, has talked about how you won with the 2016 one, even though at the time you had concerns with it. Yeah. You won with it. Yeah. It's the same register. Yeah. Of course, there's been limited registration exercises. Yeah. Why can't 
the country used the same register, which actually brought you into government. Yeah, you see, that register, I've said it here, uh, Peter McMahon, the Honorable, is one of the respected uh, people, elders in our party, very much respected, and he understands election matters. You know him, I mean, he's from your place. Yes. Yeah, you know him. And, you know, the, it, it, I have said that the ruling of the Supreme Court, Abu Ramadan versus the Electoral Commission, gave me ample basis to, you know, call for a new register. Going beyond that, uh, Madame Charlotte Tosse set up a committee uh, that went into the details of that register. And committee made certain recommendations, okay? Uh, among the recommendations is that there are serious challenges with the register. Uh, Justice VCRAC crap, you know, chaired that mm -hmm. uh, committee uh, commission. So uh, we accept that there are challenges. Even the Supreme Court in its ruling admitted that there are challenges with that uh, register. Going forward, I've heard the NDC make the argument, time without number, that uh, we used it for the regional into, uh, 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 creation of new regions. We used it for assembly. Uh, and who said that 2012 wasn't used for similar <laughs> issues before it was changed? Mm. Who said that 1996, uh, the register, wasn't used for similar duties before we changed them? And who said in 2004 we had not used them for similar... But at uh, least, existence. I mean, from, from 2004, yes. uh, that which we used in 2004 yeah. to 2012. In 2012, you, yes. that's the NPP, yeah. called for a biometric yes. register. Yes. And so now there was the need to compile a new register. Yeah. Because your argument at the time was that it was necessary for yeah. a biometric yeah. register. Yeah. You felt that would better ensure yeah. a free and fair election. Yeah. Yeah. What has changed? Well, a lot has changed. You know, change? yesterday in the presentation, a lot of people, including my good friend Atik, were convinced of the argument. Because I met him on a program and I said, the uh, uh, reasons adduced by the Electoral Commission are more than convinced that we need a new register. And they said, even STL itself, STL, eh, a vendor and a consultant to the EC, had advised that a new uh, uh, machines or systems be VMS, be... Uh, the NDC has requested that letter. They say Go, that I letter agree with them. No, no, I agree with them. I, I, that one, I don't, I've said that the reports in itself, all the consultancy reports and the ITSPS report must be made available to the political parties. I'm with them on that. Mm -hmm. You get it. And I think that's the best way to make progress as a people and as a nation. Okay, the EC, the openness and transparency. Otherwise, you begin to create needless tension and suspicion, okay, okay. which is not good for uh, the body politic. Okay, so that is the matter. Then once yesterday, and some said they were satisfied after the presentation. And if I, when I listened to General, I listened to my chairman, of Ufuzuan Pofu, and I said, ah, the way they were speaking prior to the meeting and the post-meeting, uh, the, the way they were speaking, it's like uh, there's some... They are, they are convinced about certain things, okay? Though they still have reservation, it's not as before the mm. meeting, right? Right? That's and the so impression you that's got. That's the impression I got. And they dwelled more on a certain uh, side, a side incident that happened than, you know, the matter proper. You get it. You know, I had some uh, throwing of chairs or Bishop Paul Barker coming somewhere. Yes. They were dwelling more on that than the, you know, which made, made me satisfied out of all, I think they've been... Uh, so uh, in, 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 in all of this, finally on this yeah. issue, in all of this, you've talked about, you think the Electoral Commission should have engaged more in the first yeah. instance. Yeah. You think the Electoral Commission should also make public uh, yeah. you know, some of these yeah. reports yes. uh, you know, uh, and, and, and advice from yeah. CSTL and other aspects so that yeah. all of us would see. In the absence of that, doesn't that create mistrust? And in the absence of that, should the Electoral Commission go ahead and compile a new register? Oh, they, they say they will still engage. No, but I'm asking you. Yes, in yes. The absence, no, 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 yes. In the yeah. absence of, for instance, the report. The Constitution from the gives committee. them the power. No, but in the absence of yeah. it, doesn't that create enough mistrust? No. Doesn't that suggest something wrong going on? No. And that's the need to probably shelve it. No. Should it's, the Electoral Commission go ahead in the absence yes. of providing these things which you say, the, are important. Those things will not, you know, cast a slay on the new register. It's an open thing. But it's to engender trust 
Okay, mm -hmm. that is what I seek to put across. That if those things had been done, that would have engendered trust among the parties or the stakeholders in this whole uh, 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 political discourse. Okay, that is what I seek that we have. Because of all, in 2012, the, 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 the Honorable Peter Ma Chairman Peter McMenu uh, said, the MPP took its destiny in its own hands in 2016. Okay? Why can't the MPP do the same? Yes, ah, no, but if there's opportunity to do the things right, come on. What is, why wrong, what is, you... wrong, what is wrong with the same register that brought you to power? No, 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 there are, there are problems with, I told you, uh, people go in, uh, you go and there is not picked. So there's an alternative facial recognition. What it means is that if my fingerprints are not picked, there's the highly likely, there's the impossibility that it's my facial recognition technology will pick, right? Because some people, because of the kind of nature, but if your fingerprints are, are not picked, you're sometimes yeah. verified manually. Yes, and that's where we have the problem. What is the problem? The, <laughs> the electoral commission used you to. You know, if you use the machine, eh, it's one man, one vote. That's why all these B biometric verification process and device and co <clears> is <throat> to ensure that wasting votes and the person voting is win. We've had a case where. Maybe Georgia, you see, by the time I get to A4 pool, Anglican JHS A4 in Cape Coast North mm -hmm. to vote, by the time I get there, they would have said, oh, somebody had come to vote with the name Georgia. How is already. that possible? No, it was before. The, that's why we push for the machines, okay. the biometric verification. Well, but now, when you <clears throat> go there and you are voting, they know indeed that is Georgia EC voting because your bio data is there and then your fingerprint <coughs> will attest to that. Well, let's okay, move so on. So we need to make progress on that uh, uh, level. Well, let's move on. Uh, since the uh, you know, eminent advisor... And let them continue. Yeah, yeah, I, I would love my heart for the eminent advisor. The electoral commission. Advisor, and then they to. shouldn't go to sleep because the first meeting was successful, mm -hmm. right? Uh, still, people have reservations. <laughs> and they are yet to come out with their communique, the EC. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so let the eminent advisory committee continuously look at what EC is doing. And let's have more IPAC meetings to continue to explain things and iron out. And let the processes be open and transparent. So okay. everybody will be assured so that nobody nobody is going to be shortchanged in this whole registration process. Okay, so uh, let's touch on a, a few other issues before uh, you know we end it. And... Um, Yesterday also, former President John Dramani Mahama had one of his uh, Facebook Live encounters and he was talking about happenings within the country. He's, he touched on, uh, you know, the health sector. He's raised concerns about, you know, the decision to celebrate ambulances. Yes, well, amb ambulances are important. How about the hospitals that these persons will be taking to? What happens to them? So he says there are a lot of hospitals that he started and he expects the government to complete them. So the government would be able to take people to these hospitals. You also spoke about the decision to have, uh, you know, an FX committee in place and says, well, uh, a first year economic student to be able to tell you what's the problems of the, uh, you know, CDR. And you don't govern from test books. You must sometimes be very, very practical. Let me get your uh, response on some of these issues that uh, my president, John Romani, talked about. He also talked about how he's unsure of you, uh, the government, being able to pay, uh, you know, all persons who, whose uh, deposits are lost in the the financial sector cleanup, and thus he I thinks lost. that yes, yeah, the pe lost. persons whose deposits have not been paid yet, uh -huh. uh, whose funds have lock are locked up, good, right? that's and that. he thinks that um, it would take the government four years, but he would pay within the shortest possible time if uh, elected into office. <laughs> he was he created the mess in the first place. He created which mess? yeah, the banking sector crisis. He created it. It happened under him. He looked away. They didn't take any action. Right? Mm. So, please, uh, I respect and, 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 and uh, admire him as a, a person. Uh, he's very personable. And so, but some of these things, I thought, I, I, I agree with Dr. Duchum, the Honorable Dr. Duchum, when he said, His Excellency, the former president, is not properly briefed on matters of education. And he should be thorough before he makes comments on that. And, and you know, yesterday, for instance, when he uh, uh, spoke about certain things, for instance, the uh, Adongo, Honorable Adongo's letter that he's made public, His Excellency commented on it yesterday in the Facebook Live. It turned out when the, the, the Honorable Girlfriend Yabua Dami, uh, the Deputy Attorney General, spoke on Joy yesterday, it, it turned out those were preliminary comments. When matters, preliminary comments have been made, and then further after that, 
the attorney general has met his uh, her team and they've taken a decision and then advised the Bank of Ghana and the Minister of Finance properly. And, you know, her decision is taken. Then you are depending on preliminary comments by the Deputy Attorney General. And yeah, those were matter. comments that were made, weren't they? Yes, no, yeah, but... There were comments you know, that were no, made, yeah. No, I, I've been... You see, we've, we've been to programs and meetings as student leaders at certain points. Before you go for a meeting, sometimes you get some engagements, okay? Some suggestions are brought and for you to discuss. You get it. So when you get those suggestions, it doesn't mean that the ultimate decision is taken at the General Assembly, okay? So when they've made the final decision, and even uh, uh, Unibank, Dr. Dufo and Kuh have gone to the courts, and the Attorney General is there with them, you're still depending on preliminary reports, Okay, that didn't show that His Excellency is being very thorough. That is unfortunate. Uh, his commentary on the hospital that he started but is good. We are not against that. We are committed to continuing with those uh, hospital infrastructure. Okay. But I tell you, I keep making that reference. Professor Mills, uh, when he was in power, his, uh, his Excellency President Kufour had started the Gang of Four. You remember those roads, yes. right? And then uh, almost three years into the tenure of Professor Mills, uh, the one in front of Peace FM, <laughs> dusty and cool. And he said any time he was passing there, he had to buy his head. You get it. Oh. It tells you there are certain things you need to do. And, and you see... Yeah, but Professor Mills continued... Of course. So we we'll continue. Yes, we continue. Yeah, but it's know. three years. Yes, and it was see, continued no, after no, but, three no, no, years. No, but you see, right? uh, George, George. And he himself, mm -hmm. uh, no, but George, President Mahama himself. Is, yes, but George. You know President Kufuor's affordable housing mm -hmm. Do you know yeah, it's still there? Yeah, but George, today? I mean, you're only equalizing. You're saying <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm, I'm yes. certain that but, but, yes, but yes, yes, but let me just say this. Professor Mills, and you know that the government of Ghana, in constructing the Gang of Four, decided to use HIPIC funds. No, GOG funds. GOG funds yeah. and HIPEC funds, benefits. The idea was that monies that were supposed to be paid when it was due yeah. would be channeled into these roads. Yeah. And you know also the yeah. challenge with GOG funds. The fact that in many of the instances, the funds are not there. In fact, even the, uh, the, the, the uh, pedestrian footbridge at, at uh, um, Spanner Junction, we had to look for a facility for it. You know, practically everything we do in this country... Uh, but once we, we go for, hold on, hold on, you, you understand, we go for facilities to do them. So under the uh, Professor Mills administration, they decided to go for a facility and complete it. They were in the process. Yeah. These hospitals have become very important also because there were certain places where they didn't have district, where they don't have district hospitals. Of course. And so if that has been done and we have found money to purchase ambulances, shouldn't we also have found money? To complete these hospitals uh you see do we have some hospitals in the system that are functioning we do do we but we admit they're no. not enough do we do we, we? Do. good now is the same argument they made when we we're trying to implement the health insurance okay is so that we didn't have enough hospitals and yet we have some hospitals where people the challenge that president kufu administration had seen was that people have difficulty in paying the hospital bills. That is how come most of the people resort to uh, uh, traditional medication. I'm not saying the traditional, so sorry, self-medication. Okay, and that leads to the death of a lot of people. And so since cost is a major hindrance or impediment, let's see how we can take that out. The few hospitals available, we can make use, good use of it. And the ambulance service, what is it? Even if there's no hospital in the district, there's a hospital in an adjoining district. You, the ability to transport you from point A to point B as fast as possible, okay? Mm -hmm. It's very important. It can save your life. If there's emergency somewhere, road accident and co, there's the dependence, I don't want to refer to, uh, forgive me viewers, uh, the case that we had from Castle to 37, okay? Mm -hmm. Of the late, you know, you get it. He was in an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, that's he was not, in number. That's not what we all had. Oh, well, he was that's in That's not ambulance. what we all had. That's not it was what the case, we it was all the, had. It was the case of the former vice president. No, no, the, pres the, the president, president was president. in an ambulance. No, there was an that's, ambulance that's, that's not castle. what we all There's had. always a station uh, ambulance. Yeah, yeah station. that's why people were asking, well, was, why was, an was it not the ambulance that took him there, but he was in the bucket of another... Oh, no, it was, uh, it was uh, a late uh, vice president. Uh, it was somewhere. a late vice president. Who was no, 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 no. I'm talking Professor Mills. It was in an ambulance. 37. Go the soldiers ahead. are here. Just go check. It you was in an ambulance. Yes, go <laughs> ahead.
<laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have to laugh. Uh, on, oh, on you these matters. Yes. yes, go ahead. So, so uh, the, 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 the pro former president, yes, we are committed to continuing with projects. Uh, but as you said, prioritization. And the ambulance is very important. And it's good at this time. Okay, that we have ambulances. I'm so excited that they say major highways that are prone to accidents will be having some standby on them. You get it? Yeah. It tells me that instead of putting somebody, forgive me, the Honorable George Anda, eh, the MP for Utu Senior West, said last time, I, I said, whoa. He said when he had his accident, he was put in a boboya, yeah. member of parliament, yeah. a deputy minister of state to the nearest hospital. But for the Aboboya, maybe his situation would have been worse, okay? So this tells you the agency and importance of the ambulance service uh, in Ghana. And so I'm all for it. He should be rest assured that uh, the hospitals he started will definitely be continued, okay? Sometimes the fact that you put up the hospital uh, infrastructure in terms of building doesn't mean you have a hospital. So let's, let's get that uh, also right and properly uh, situated. Even the University of Ghana one very fantastic right beautiful edifice and cool but there are a lot of fittings that must be put in that's what makes it a hospital okay they are working on that mm -hmm. okay so uh, he should rest assured that uh, these things uh, will, will will be attended to last I listened to the PR of uh, Ghana Health Service they did a documentary and they stated the way they are tackling all they've identified all the uh, facilities that were started by the former president and then the stages at which they are and how and they it's taking us three years oh governance is a continuum yes and so the, I mean, and, the, and do you know the facilities thing, were when you spoke about the final yes oh no no you need to get a handle on your finances you need to do that and i tell you okay. you, you know that so, we spent mm -hmm. we spent over 64 billion eh? mm -hmm. about 31 billion interest payments eh? mm -hmm. and then about 33 legacy debt so let's get okay? to uh, in I, the I, last I, budget, I'll come back with we'll 64 interrogate. billion we, we, out of we, the 85 billion we, 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 you know what we, we, that interrogate, means interrogate. you know what that means no but if you no but if you no but, no, but <laughs> hold on if you spent 64 billion in paying debts those debts will be Straight off your book that. Yes. If they are off your book, mm -hmm. it would lead to a reduction in your debts. Yes. It wouldn't lead to an increase. Yes. We we'll, we'll interrogate you <laughs> after we go for uh, the messages. And Good morning again. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes we have yes, our, our comments coming uh, through our WhatsApp first. Uh, correct score, Zakaria from Sunyani says, when China used two days to build a thousand bed capacity hospital, Nana Ado is here commissioning ambulances. And when Mahama was also building hospitals, Nana Ado was making mockery of him. Visionless leader, three years in office, no hen coop has been put up. The meeting with the IPAC and Eminence Advisory Committee, the outcome will be, will be in the interest of Ghanaians. No one will change any register here. We thank our Eminence uh, supply, su supplicants to Mr. Rollins. Uh, regards, Charles. Akoa Buna Regional Communications Officer. Good morning, TV3. I think there's no need for a new regis voters register. Uh, look at the president, pardon me, look at the present situation. Uh oh. Give me a second. Uh, all right. Good morning, TV3. I think there's no need for new voters register. A few. Okay. <laughs> all right. We move on. Look at the present situation in the country. The government should rather channel the, these monies into development enough of the misplaced priorities. And that's from Osman Bukuri Sung in Tamale. Al Hassan Wanwana in Wa says, if compiling a new voters register will rig an election, then Mrs. Charlotte Osei should have done that for the NDC to retain power. Ghanaians need to uh, need a compilation of a new voters register for our next election. This current register is discredited and full of question marks. My regards to Honorable Hajia Humu for Wa Central. Good morning, Mr. Amwa and Mr. EC. The compilation of a new voters register is a must, according to the EC. They have decided and it stands. Go to court if you disagree with them. The voters register issue is consuming much time, which should have been used to discuss solutions to pertinent unemployment and injustice in our society. That's from Effa Isaac, Etrima uh, Nwa Bieja, oh, North Constituency, pardon me. For more, for more for Benito Owusu-Bio. Okay, good morning, TV3. The EC has failed to uh, convince the eminent 
committee on the need for voters to register. Even her technical team could not defend their ideology. Hashtag drop the register. And that's from B Victor from Bunpurugu. Good morning, CV3. I think this is the last of the morning. Good morning, CV3. I wish to comment, commend you on your new day show. And let me congratulate bro uh, Brother Wilson for your line of questioning. Um, Okay, for your line of questioning, your panelists, I wish to suggest that the IPAC should try to agree with the EC um, to carry on its constitutional duties. That's from John Tongo to Winston. That's it for the morning. Right. Thank you very much, um, Crystal, for the messages. So um, let me say that we've been joined by a representative from the NDC. Uh, we have a few minutes to wrap up, but uh, better late than never, we say. Uh, so, uh, Margaret uh, Anse Magu, who's uh, a former MC for Zoom, she's joined us. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. And uh, thank you very much for joining us, even though you are uh, every day. Do you live it like that? So, um, let me get your views on the meeting with the Inter Party Advisory Committee and the Eminent Advisory Co Committee of the Electoral Commission yesterday. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you've been following issues. Uh, George AEC has been talking about the fact that uh, he, he, he's had a field day and he's been talking about how he feels that, you know, lots of things are going well. And that uh, the Daily Guide says the party say yes. yes. Uh, the Daily Graphic says. Uh, it was still locked. I mean, uh, there was no breakthrough. But let me get your views on this. I mean, your party has been against the voters' register. You've had a meeting. Uh, some people who went to the meeting, uh, like uh, Tik, uh, you know, seems to have been convinced. That I don't know about you. Uh, based on all that you've heard, you're convinced now? Yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning once mm -hmm. again. And good morning to your cherished viewers. I have to apologize viewers, to viewers that I'm sorry for being late, and it's not going to happen again. Um, on EC's issues, I know George, he had his day and he said a lot. But the point is, as an electoral commission, which is an institution in Ghana, your main client is the citizens of Ghana. And irrespective of which category they fall under, they can be your customers under the categories of publics, they can be your customers, they can be your producers, they can be your limiters or your enablers. No matter category they fall in, you must listen to them and build a consensus. EC's work technically is on technical issues and more of relationship building because it's about elections. If there is no democracy, there is no EC. Do, do you understand? And democracy births the political parties. So from the onset, on Dr. Boswanasari and Madame Jane Mensa and uh, Dr. Shribo, when you listen to their comments, you 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 will realize whether NDC as a political party, together with the other minority parties who do not support the compilation of a new register, you you render you wonder how they categorize them because political parties are main customers of the Electoral Commission. Mm. They are their main customers which no matter the circumstance, you must consider their interest because all these things, it's about relationship building. But the Electoral Commission must also consider what would make it run a good Thank election. You. The, the you. most important thing is, as a decision maker or as an institution, when you are making decision, your conscious effort is to consider whether the end results will bring happiness or chaos. They say in this case, they do not want the situation where you and George and Ghanaians would go and blame the Electoral Commission when there is any problem with elections. Even so they want to do that which would serve their interest best and that of Ghana. The old biometric register has brought NDC to power before. It has brought MPP to power before. Yeah, so at this point, there is no discrepancies or any, there is no doubt about this new register. Yes. And the Electoral Commission itself confirmed that it is 99.6 accurate. In the, history, in, 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 in the history of IT, or even in its hierarchy, there is no way in terms of reliability you can compare facial recognition to biometric fingerprints. No. Nowhere in IT. They are not compared. Nowhere in IT. So why do you have the best biometric fingerprints if you don't have DNA? You have the best biometric... Then you want to exchange it for facial recognition, which no. its accuracy you cannot authenticate as is to. The, the, the printer. They, they so, are actually doing both. Good. They're the doing both. Is, so they're adding, they're adding my, 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 yes. my, Please, George, you've had your day. My <laughs> point is that from their communication, from the onset, we were here when Bosman Asari referred to the NDC as threat to democracy. An electoral commission which 
you have let's say two poli major political parties then you tr you pamper one then you criticize one then you introduce them or you describe them as threats so from the onset the electoral commission he itself now statements that you were making as threats to democracy but but, yeah. but he shouldn't because it's you had said he was a threat he to democracy shouldn't. he shouldn't because he should he should be in between hmm. he should be he, he, both sides can the electoral commission today criticize mpp yes can which can you give are me you, an are example? You, are you suggesting, the they're, in bed, are you today, suggesting yes. they're in bed with the NPP? Electoral Commission today. You see, my point is from their utterance. No, when you say from from Madame Jemais, are you Jemais suggesting they're in bed with the NPP? From Madame Jemais, mm -hmm. can you imagine that in an IPAC meeting, mm -hmm. stakeholder consultation, then a general secretary of the opposition party smiles, then she gets offended. Laughs. Yeah, but yeah, but my, my, my question Lost is, are you, are you saying? Ways. Are you by this saying and suggesting? That the electoral commission I, is in bed my, with the NPP. My, my point is that if Dr. Bosmasari can call us threat to democracy, and if Madame Jane Mensa can 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 feel can be you offended, haven't answered my question. can be offended to a smile from our general secretary, it is a clear discrimination. It looks like no. the, the electoral commission has a special spot for the NPP wow. and has a, a particular attitude towards us. And I think the commission itself, they need to be reoriented because they must stand in between. No matter what, you cannot treat your customers, your direct obvious public. You can't treat us as opponents because it is without political parties. There is no electoral commission. So they should have reorientation and know that irrespective of the party in power, every political party is very necessary and they must treat them as their obvious customers. Mm. Where's the... 30 seconds, my time is up. George still has to talk. <laughs> you have landed. So yeah. I'll just give Thank you. you. Uh, Madam Magu has <laughs> is, is made her point that I thought we've gone beyond uh, the argument he's making. And then the suspicion, you said it that they they no, we are still they on fired, the argument. Because they fired, election is they fired, they fired the first salvo. And if they don't change their attitude towards us, they fired the first salvo. You landed and you gave him the speech, yeah. so let me talk. If they don't yeah. change oh. their attitude you towards wonder, us. Though. No, no, no. If they, from what you said, mm. you said we've gone past that, but if the commission do led by that's the why members, the eminent advisors are in. That's why the eminent advisors are in. That's why we've had a very good IPAC meeting yesterday. Because every political party is you should, your important. general and chairman are very happy for yesterday. They are not happy. Meeting. How can you uh, say yes. voter register will be ready oh, on Magu. the 8th of November? Madam. 29 days to uh, elections. You see. Allah, we, we, are, we are we are partners here. I, I must have my say as George. well. You, you, you have it. yours. No, you you, yours. you decided to sleep more than you no, should. No, 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 you, you had yours. Even when I was sitting on the panel, I had you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you had yours. You sat on the panel. Yes. 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 So, so, so you are telling all of us that you've engaged. Oh, I, I, oh, I have it. No, 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 but you, no, but no, but you're no, just. No, no, it's not illegal. You, Kadama is a motor. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Commercial, commercial motor. I had a lens on the panel. No, 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 no. You think you are admitting? What's the, the, the other aspect? Oh, well, just small thing. Yes. Yeah, I was happy you mm. told Madam the two will go, uh, who complement mm. each other. And two, the point six they are talking about, that point six translates to over 90,000 votes in our register. Okay. okay. And Professor Most Bates Nana, His Excellency, by 40,000. And those persons would have voted okay. anyway. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. you uh, get George, it. Uh, so let's use every uh, means to George get one man, one vote. Uh, Director of <laughs> National Disaster <laughs> Management Organization, Admiral. And you, thank you register as a uh, Margaret and Sam Agu. Hold on, hold on. Former MC for Sohum.